Well, we used to have a van called the Chickford Harrier, all right? Because we had actually, uh, talking about, you know, like fantastic times of your career, when we first <laughs> went onto a transit van, lo a, a, a long transit with the, with the double wheels on the back, the bar across the back doors and the mesh on the back windows, that was amazing. Made it, you know, you made it. Anyway, we, we had too much gear in the end because we were getting quite big. So we had to take on like this old van and I can't remember the make of it, but it was bigger and fatter. It was almost like a, you know, a, it was a sort of a small lorry and uh, it was called the Chickford Harrier. And we had two roadies at the time, Malcolm Kingsnorth, who's dead now, bless his heart, and worked with Billy Connolly for many, many years. And uh, uh, he was our original sound man, and we used to call him the Drelk. And uh, we had this other guy um, called Slug. And Slug would come up with all these uh, kind of things of when a rhino meets a rhino, going through the rye, no. And at the time we'd find it hilarious. And then he'd come up with this thing, he'd just walk around going, dog of two head. And it eventually, you know, we, we kind of listened to this and thought, that's quite good. Not dog of two heads, or dog with two heads, dog of two head. It was cool. Let's call the album, dog of two head. That's how it came about. And what a picture, and what an imagery. It was fantastic. Now, you, you left Pi and went to um, Vertigo. Vertigo at the time was a very, very new label. What, how did your involvement come about with it? I don't know. I don't know. I never, was, I never really took any, any interest in that, really. I mean, as um, long as we had a record label, Pi was, was great, and we, we had a lot of success there. And uh, Vertigo as far as I remember, was, uh, was a, a new kind of trendy label with the, when the, the middle went round, it kind of hypnotized you, you know, and uh, all the cool acts were sort of on vertigo. And uh, I remember we were very knocked out to be there. It was a great deal at the time, and we, we knew we were going forward to be on the vertigo label, you know. And again, a lot of, lot of success, but how we got there, I don't know. I, I don't even know who was managing us at the time. Um, you know, because we're getting to the years now where one is starting to lose it a little bit because of foreign substances, you know. <laughs> Life was a laugh. Now, your first single for them was Paper Plane, which is still a huge part of Quo World now. Mm. Tell us about Paper Plane. Well, again, it's out the, the, uh, the Rossi Young stable of great songs and uh, like um, like in my chair the lyrics again were far out you know they were all to do with like hallucinating and you know and uh, um, and largely true you know talking about the the, the Deutsche car and cause we had this big uh, Mercedes 600 Pullman you know and uh, it just reflecting on the times that we had and, and, and the pace of the song and the energy in that song, it was uh, just fantastic. And I mean, talk about a song that's, that stood the test of time. I mean, even now on stage, it's there with, with everything, you know, with rocking all over the world and, you know, and, uh, and whatever you want. It's, in fact, some nights, um, uh, paper plane we we don't do it all the while but when we do god it, it it just tears the place up and as soon as you start hitting that song on stage it's an immediate turn on when it all kicks in incredible